Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakudash. Double honors to my apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. Salutations to the Lord's hope for elect scattered abroad. I'm the brother Taz of War. Once again, here with another lesson. And um, Lord willing, I hope that this lesson will be edifying to those of the hopeful elect. All right, now the word edify means to build. And what we're building upon is our faith. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. Okay? Because that's what this thing is about. Uh, Apostle Paul said, we teach the way to salvation. Okay, now you got many different other camps of Israelites of the circumcision that really don't teach the way of salvation, but they give you some sort of knowledge of who you are. And that's cool. But when it comes to salvation, you have to have the 100% truth. And I must say, here at Great Millstone, starting with our apostles and elders, okay, at Great Millstone, we have 100% truth, okay? So, you know, I just wanted to say that. And uh, this lesson was inspired from a video I saw yesterday from the Brothers Page, GMS Strong in the Faith Ba. He did a beautiful testimony and how uh, his he was at the job and this Edomite was pressing him, you know, like Esau do, you know, pressing him in a wicked way. And the brother, he basically put a curse on this devil. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah came through, all right, in the curse in which the brother put on that devil, you know. So that just shows you that the Lord is on our side, okay? The Lord is on our side. That's a faith booster, you know. Now, I got to say this for you newly fruit, starting with the men down to the women and sisters who listen, who are sincere. All right. You make me learning of this thing, being an Israelite, you watching, and it may alarm you when a brother say, you know, putting a curse on someone. Well, you know, the Lord gave us the gifts to bless or the curse all right and i give you an example which you could do your due diligence and look it up you know you had elisha one of the accounts with elisha all right the understudent of elijah and he was mourning over elijah because elijah was taken up by a chariot before his eyes and elisha received a double portion of the power so that he can perform those miracles and, and those things in the name of the lord but in the process him seeing his teacher being taken up you know meaning his elijah was gone okay he wasn't coming back at that time and he was mourning and our customs when we mourn our hebrew customs were that we would shave our head balls cut our beards off well pluck our beards out cut our beards off or whatever and he was actually on his journey and some children came and mocked him and they was cursing, you know, basically saying, go up thou bald head, go up thou bald head. And Elisha was grieved. He was mad. So what Elisha did, he cursed these children. And he cursed them in the name of the Lord. He put a curse on them. And so it surely so happened, two she-bears came and killed 42 of them. So there's one account to show you that the proof that the prophets of the Lord can also send up a curse on someone that is wicked. And if the Most High is willing, okay, he will bring down judgment according to the curse that the prophet sent up to the Lord. And this is why it's important to be humble, to be lowly, you know, to be uh, circumspect, mindful that these men of the Lord are very precious to Yahweh Bashem Yahweh The elect is very precious. Okay, remember there was, there was the story, the account with Moses and his sister Miriam. Okay, Mary, she what? Spoke against him, her and Aaron. And what the Lord did in behalf of Moses, he struck her with leprosy. Okay, and Moses didn't know. When he came back, he grieved, he cried. And he prayed to the Lord to forgive his sister, you know, and to clean, cleanse her skin. And the Lord did after seven days. 
but the point in that is that you understand the uh the understanding of fear and the precious men who the lord is is dear unto okay so now let me say this too and i'm going to read the scriptures so like you for my long wind but i hope this is edifying um the word curse you know the word curse just means if you look it up it means a prayer for evil to befall and bring misfortune to someone or something let me say that again prayer for evil to befall or bring misfortune to someone or something now in the western this western world we're living in they believe and they understand that the word curse just means rude words or they say profanity which really profanity goes back to profane which profane just means outside the temple okay like unlawful foods you know and um things that are not holy it's profane so you know basically the word curse just means prayer for evil to befall or bring misfortune to someone or something and that's the understanding of that now you know you might be alarmed and feeling funny and not understanding that but you gotta have to pray when the lord is dealing with you you understand these things it's not witchcraft you know like voodoo or what is it the blue aida if i'm saying that right salakia i believe dominicans and that black magic no it's not that all right so anyway let's go into it this is psalms 124 and 1 a song of decrees of david if it had not been yahweh who was on our side now may israel say if it had not been yahweh who was on our side when men rose up against us then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us you know so all praises to yahweh bashim yahushai because you can clearly see that today all right look at for one our apostles you know our apostles been teaching over 30 years and they've been through wars okay they've been through different seasons different demons that they had to deal with okay they have the great experience that us brothers you know uh are experiencing now what they experience you know over and over already and if it wasn't the lord on their side and our side because we're followers okay we're followers of yahweh shai and they're followers of yahweh shai then they then we would have been swallowed up this truth would not have been well let's say the sincerity the sincerity of the truth you know would not be where it's at but because of yahweh bashim yahweh shai and his hopeful elect the truth is here okay and it's clear to say like elder apostle to tell you you know we have 100 percent truth now you look at these different camps and you look at the bullshit that was posted well i seen a video from the elder brother yashawamba he did a response to some of the bullshit in israel that was put up and really airing out their dirty laundry and the lord exposing them these guys are adulterous these guys are false prophets it shows you they have really no true leadership okay it's just go go along to get along you can clearly see that these men are not the, the men you know I, i'm saying you should be following right now because they're leading with carnality you know rap videos with guns in there one guy saying you can't judge me because i'm gonna do what i want to do another guy saying the same damn thing you know when these guys are gonna lead you down the path of destruction we're here at great millstone we're teaching you like paul said the ways of salvation and that's through faith so put all your faith and bank let me say bank all your faith and trust and belief on your how about shimmy i was shy and the lord's gonna get you through okay scriptures say give diligence to make your calling and election sure and none of these shall fail all right roughly paraphrasing i don't know if i'm mixing two scriptures so i can but you know you get it you can look it up so let's continue it says if it had not been the lord yahweh who was on our side when men rose up against us then they had swallowed us up quick 
when their wrath was kindled against us. All right. It says, then the waters. Well, let me say this too. You know, it's sort of like, well, let me continue. Then the waters have, then the waters, verse four. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream have gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be Yahweh who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. You know? Hey, the water Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. And may he continue to protect his elect. Because given over to their teeth, you will be destroyed. It says, Blessed be Yahweh who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. You know, you become a prey when you wake up to this truth, man. This world is fucking wicked, man. And everyone thrives off wickedness. They increase off wickedness. All right? They find themselves, you know, in the ways of wickedness to be somebody. Most most Jakes don't know who they are. They don't know what they what they want to be. But they find themselves through the ways of wickedness. You know, then they think they found their life. They think that this is what they supposed to be and how they supposed to be mannering themselves. All right. Now I got a quick precept that came in mind. And this is uh, in the book of Isaiah 59 and 13. It says, in the transgressions and lying against Yahweh and departing away from our power, speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood and judgment is turned the way backward and justice standeth afar off for truth is fallen in the streets and equity cannot enter yea truth faileth and he that departeth from evil maketh himself a prey and Yahweh saw it and it displeased him that there was no judgment all right so when we depart from evil, all right, casting off the old man, okay, that old nigga, and for you sisters who was that old bitch, all right, that female dog, that shameless creature, right? And he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. You now become a prey, all right? You, you now become someone who the world you know, which is thriving in wickedness, believe they could run over you, take advantage of. But through the good graces and power of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and his word, he keeps a hedge over us, a charge, man, so that these things won't be. And like I said, in the account, and just, you know, when you meditate, think about our apostles. Look how long they've been teaching and been through different seasons, different wars and battles. You know, you can't say today, it's like 20 years ago. It's different. And that's because Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, the Lord said, um, uh, how I go? Uh, there's a time and season uh, and purpose under the heavens. Right now, we're in the time of Esau. You know, let's say we're in the time of the Lord prophecy is being revealed, being manifest. All right? So times have changed. And this is why we got to evolve and flow with the waters of the seasons you know if you stuck in the past in the waters of the past then you're going to drown in the waters in the new seasons all right we're, we're, we're surfing upon the waters that the lord bring upon the earth okay through his word we're able to surf the waters and be on top swim the waters if you want to say you know so with that being said let's go back it says, um, blessed be Yahweh who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. Now, when I think of uh, verse four and five, you know, it's like when it says, then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. You know, I think of the stormtroopers when they come in like a flood, man. The Lord said he would lift up a standard. All right, when Esau come down having great wrath because he know that he had but a short time, you know, we don't have no power. We don't have no might. 
And no, we're not going to pick up guns to defend ourselves. All right. Let me hit you with something. And I hope you listen well. And this is for the Lord's hopeful elect. Did Apostle Paul and Peter and many brethren, okay, prophets that had got locked up, okay, imprisonment for teaching the word, suffering for the Lord, for the word's sake, for Yahweh Shai's sake, did they have any key or did they break any locks to get out of jail? Did they fight, did they fight their way out of jail to be free? No, they didn't. They sat, they waited patiently, which the word patient means to suffer, and they waited upon the Lord to make a move. That's what you call divine intervention. When the Most High interfere in man's goings. And that's a lesson right there, another lesson. Divine intervention. The Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bashem Yahweh Shai, he interferes in man's goings. And that's what happened. You see that an angel came, unloosed the locks on their feet, which was Peter. And you had Apostle Paul and Silas, where the Lord actually had an earthquake. You know, he shook and broke the chains off. Bear with me, let me get away from this highway. So, Salakia. All right. All right, Salakia. I may have lost uh, my point where I was at. But, um, you know, I want to say, let me read the scripture again. Uh, Blessed be Yahweh, who have not given us as a prey to their teeth you know because you're gonna have to trust in the lord man i think i was on the point of you know trusting in the lord man because you got these different camps and i'm bringing them up not because i'm hating okay it's because i'm forewarning you all right and what this thing is going to come down to all right it's not going to come down to you having um food stocked up in a in a warehouse this camp got guns and men to protect you that's not gonna save you oh i know what i was talking about all right so you had apostle the apostles you had peter you had apostle paul okay and a few other men when they were imprisonment and got locked up for the word's sake did they have a key did they fight their way out of jail did they sneak out of jail, break the locks off them and sneak out? No, they waited patiently. All right, and the word patience means to suffer. And they waited upon Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to do something. And what the Lord did was divine intervention. Okay, Yahweh interfering in man's goings. All right, and they were free. And they, what they did when they were free, they gave all praises and glory. To Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah because it was truly of his work. So in these latter days, okay, what these guys in these different camps are doing, what they're speaking of, not of prophecy and warning you and teaching you to rely on your faith, okay, in the Lord, build your faith up in the Lord, building a hedge over you, all right, so you can have the correct understanding, you know, is that they're making you rely on carnal things. These guys are taking away from the Lord as if the Most High can't raise up stones to prophesy. All right? We understand the power of the Lord. We know that the Lord can raise up stones as men and go out and prophesy. There's nothing impossible to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. All right? And we truly understand that and believe that. Okay? Unlike certain men teaching you carnal things, man. You know, they are keep teaching you this carnal way of believing in the Lord. You know, now we do these videos in response to those men because we're warning you sheep, you true elect, you know, sincere men and to you sisters to know what this thing is truly about. All right. This is not a, a gossip. You know, we pick up the the uh, we feel ourselves to gossip. We here to edify you, you know, to build upon your faith toward your how about you? I was shy. You know, so I said enough. I'm going to continue and finish. It says, um, blessed be Yahweh who have not given us as a prey to their teeth. That's right, man. Call halal la Yahweh Bashim Yahweh It says, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we 
are escaped. So when you, brothers, you know, you can picture this, man. When you watch the Discovery Channel and the animal world, and you see how Esau narrate, you know, the uh, situations with animals and their affairs and their world, how they go after each other. And you might come across a, a bird escaping, excuse me. You might um, come across a bird escaping a, a, a trap and how wonderful that, that is because he's able to live another day. Well, the way we're gonna be able to escape is by Yahweh by Shemi Shai. Not by guns, not by no militant group who ain't even believing in Yahweh Shai, giving praises to Yahweh Shai. You know, we're not gonna be delivered nothing carnally. Everything is gonna be spiritual, it's spiritual at the end of the day. So it says, our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. And that's the trap. You know, scriptures say, you know, to these Edomites, Psalms 2, no, Psalms 10 and 2, okay, 1 and 2. It says, let him be taken in the devices that he have imagined. You know, Esau is going to be taken in the traps that he set up against the Lord's elect. Now, verse 8, our help is in the name of Yahweh, who made heaven and earth. So this is another scripture to prove you that you better know the true name of the Lord and worship and confess the true name of the Lord and pray because calling upon these different names, thinking it's okay to use these different names and the Lord just supposed to understand that you talking about him, you know, you're going off. Yeah, we know the Lord knows that you may be referring to him, but if you're not calling upon his name, all right, then guess what? You ain't got the truth, all right? You know someone by their name, and that person knows you uh, if you calling upon their name, okay? It's not Yah, Jah, Ahaya, Yeshaya, or whatever you want to call them, you know? You got these different camps like IURC saying you can call the name whatever you want. And that's truly false. Man, I'm sorry. I don't want to go off subject when I'm thinking about the video I saw last night. And you got these women jumping from man to man. You got these so-called leaders, you know, which are the most biggest adulterers in Israel, supposed to be leading these, these sheeple. Well, excuse me, sheeple. Yeah, they are sheeple. But supposed to be leading the sheep. And really, they just having sex with all the women, you know, committing adultery with the same woman, you know, but that's for another lesson because you women are not supposed to be jumping from man to man, all right? If a man of the Lord divorce you, the honorable thing for you to do, okay, is not to be with another man, it's, it's to reconcile with that man, all right? I don't know why the spirit, you know, whatever, it's the spirit of the Lord, you know, I say this and I'm out, you know, if you women, Get divorced by your husband in the truth and he's in the truth okay you supposed to you know remain unmarried and pray you know basically supposed to examine yourself you know and pray that yahweh bashimi i was shy reunite you reconcile with your husband man it's not a okay that now you can move on and another man of the lord could deal with you because that man put you away that shit they got going on over there with uh uh what's that armies of israel and fopi and all that other shit them dudes is off man and that's why it's a jungle over there so anyway lord willing i hope this lesson was edifying i want to give all praises to yahweh bashim yahweh shai bashim rakakwadash double honors to my apostles and elders of great millstone salutations to the lord's elect shalom